Hello and welcome to this tutorial, in this case about step 2 of the Navier-Stokes equation, originally from Lorena Barber, and we will jump right into it and don't waste much time on the introduction. Um, we have step 1 covered in the last time, where we covered linear convection. This formula was the important one, the dt plus c times the dx equals 0, correlating a time change and a local change with a constant c. Step 2 will be different from that as it changes the constant factor by implementing the function itself into the constant factor. So in this case you have the dt plus u times the dx equals 0 correlating a time change in time plus the velocity itself times the deriv derivative of the velocity in local spacing. So in this case nonlinear because u is in here and you cannot say uh, solve that yeah, analytically um, in an easy way. So for this case what changes in here is not much. Um, the derivatives will be discretized like before, same methods, same story, but we change in here the constant to a u depending on i, and then we will be able to run it. Okay? So, like once, maybe once before, see what step one was, you had this wave propagating. And now the change will be implemented, u depending on i. And run it again. Now you see that the wave changes its shape and will become smaller and smaller during the propagation. Now I want to motivate you to change the parameters in here as well and try to experiment with it a little bit because I think that's really good to get a feeling for it. Maybe change the number of dots to 51. See what happens. Now you see that there is some, yeah, what you could say uh, interference. Something has gone wrong. And this relates to that, that the time spacing or the time step and the local spacing do not correlate. They're completely independent and that's the reason why you can get such interferences. If I change the time step to a less amount, for example, then you see that the propagation is correct as well. The shape change will be maybe a little bit different, but um, it's not getting this uh, chaotic anymore. Now the reason behind that we will cover in a minute. First let's save this step as step 2. And we will go on from here. Now there is this part you can read about the equations and watch the videos as well on the side. Um, and the next step is, or the, it's not a really step, but it's a little bit more about the conver convergence and the CFL condition. This addresses these um, parameters or these uh, issues with, um, with your convergence criteria, with your interference, which, with the chaotic structures you get. So CFL condition, let's say that in short terms, is sigma equals the u, dt, uh, u, d, u delta t divided by delta x. And this, let me explain that to you, is a velocity times a certain time step divided by a length. And in this case is a dimensionless constant or dimensionless uh, value, you could say. And let's see if we can uh, get to the meaning of that by just thinking about it for a moment. So you had a velocity named u times a um, spacing in time divided by a certain time step. That's what's called sigma. Okay, now everyone knows that velocity is um, something in meters divided by something in time. Meters per second or something like that. 
if I multiply a certain velocity with a distance, I will get nothing. <clears throat> That's what I, when I see that I made a mistake. So back here, I switched those two. So we will just erase. Uh, maybe we'll start completely over again. So it's not multiplied with a um, with a spacing, but with a time. So velocity times a certain time step divided by a certain spacing. That's what sigma is. Now, you know, velocity equals some distance divided by some time. And if I multiply that with a certain amount of time, those two will get cancelled out and I get a distance again. So I Comparing, I'm comparing two distances. Let's just draw a grid, grid for a second. You have your grid in here. They are delta x um, apart. And you have a velocity, maybe um, we could draw that as an error here and this velocity will get multiplied with a time step this equation here says how far travels the value in here during one time step and the cfl condition here it's called cfl here says that or compares those two. So if it travels just about this much as dx is, CFL would be one or sigma would be one. In this case here, sigma would be one. And you want to be less than one because then your time spacing is um, more precise than your local spacing and you don't get to those interference problems anymore. If it's bigger than one you have the problem that it's overshooting your local spacing and this you have um, the arrows like you see when you're shooting video cameras of moving objects for example the rotatory movement of a helicopter plate with uh, a 60 frames per second um, video camera, camera you will get images maybe like that. You see that the blade stands still and um, they are not actually standing still but it's just a camera which captures exactly at that moment where the blade is in the same position again in its frame. So you could say that if it's a 60 frames per second camera then it has to be a constant multiplication of 60 frames per second which gives you the number of rotary leads per second for that helicopter. So those problems you don't want to have and therefore the CFL condition is implemented. Now how do you do that? You just simply relate those two. So you just say no I don't want to be a constant, uh, I don't want to code a constant time step anymore but I want to name a parameter named sigma times uh, the local spacing. And in this case it will give you the opportunity to define sigma. If I want to be the uh, CFL condition, for example 0 0.5, well that's just valid for a velocity of constant 1, but uh, it's, it's working anyway. If I want to say that um, the time uh, intervals should be twice as much as the local spacing intervals, um, then I can do that like this. Now just try it again. find my window here it is and now you see that you have no interference problems anymore you have maybe you you uh, want to change your local nodes a little bit 
and normally if you had the same time step this will certainly get an error in this case it's just traveling at a lower speed <laughs>